we decided roughly about two years ago to undertake this project. It's one of many of the historical projects that we've undertaken. But this one we decided to undertake from the point of view that we had this period in Queensland's history when we used to execute people. Uh, that was the ultimate form of punishment we had. This was done from 1883 to 1913 at Bogger Road Jail. And it's important for people today to realise and recognise the things that have happened in our past. This particular area where these people are buried um, is significant and that is why the plaque, we've decided to erect the plaque, is again to acknowledge that point in our history when that's what we used to do. We used to execute people and it's not about glorifying the people in the ground, it's certainly not about glorifying uh, executions and it's most certainly not intended to make a martyr of these people but it is designed to recognise that we had this period in our history when that's what we used to do, we used to execute people and this allows us when we erect plaques like this to have indicators and stories told about the things that have happened in the past which make up who we are today. This area that we're in we had 42 people executed, there was 41 men and one woman that was executed here for a, a range of crimes, but they were normally for murders. But they were uh, they were hanged at Bogger Road Jail. So you end up with a situation where we have a real League of Nations, which there was, there were uh, Indigenous P uh, Australians executed, there were South Sea Islanders, there were people from Europe, uh, uh, there was a person from Japanese, uh, Japan, sorry, executed, and there were even people from uh, South America and, and North America. The hangings took place at around 8 o'clock on Monday mornings, apart from one hanging which took place on a Tuesday. The prisoner would wake up early in the morning, if they'd slept at all, and they'd be offered a last meal. Then they would be seen by the chaplain, who would probably spend all morning with them from that point on until the time of their death. Shortly before the hanging began, the uh, hangman went to the cell and he uh, and he had tied them up to prevent any chance of an escape or a struggle. They'd be tied by the, their arms and the, the, their thighs as well were tied together. They were then taken to the scaffold where they, they would stand and all this time the, the um, priest or whatever minister that they have would be doing all the um, religious prayers, things like that. Um, the prisoner would then be asked if they had any last words to say. Uh, sometimes they would speak for 27 minutes was the longest one and the shortest there was a few people who didn't speak at all. Then the, the white cat was placed over the head the noose was placed around the neck by the, the hangman, who was often um, were wearing dark glasses and a false beard as a form of um, disguise. So they'd be standing there with the noose around the neck and the signal would be given, which was from the um, jail governor, who would take out a white handkerchief and drop it to the, the, the floor or uh, wave it as such. When the handkerchief was waved the hangman would step to a lever on the side of the uh, trap door, pull it, the trap would, fall, would um, fall open with a huge crash and the prisoner would fall through to the floor beneath. Uh, most of the time when they drop the neck would be broken and death would come very very quickly. Sometimes though they would be strangled to death which could take several minutes and for the, and for the witnesses there this would be quite horrific. The prisoners were left to hang for, for about 10 minutes or so at least and and then the doctor would step forward he'd check the pulse to see if they were dead and if they were then the rope was lowered down they were placed in the, the uh, coffin and put on the undertaker's cart and taken to south brisbane cemetery 
back then it was a real novelty. Uh, the, the children of the area and certainly the residents of the area were aware that executions took place uh, here at Bogger Road Jail. Well, for, for a certain time, the, the son of the school governor went to the school next door, so he knew when this was going to, to happen, so he'd t t tell them all on the Friday and so on a Monday they'd all be standing at the fence and uh, looking. <laughs> Alright, this area that we're standing in now is the site of the unmarked graves. This is where the 42 people that were executed were buried. And they were basically in two rows. The area runs essentially from this tree or the, the uh, uh, tombstone that you can see down there, roughly up until about this tree up here in two separate rows. Two sandstone blocks that c have come from the original Bogger Road Jail will also be incorporated into the design and the final product. The idea of it all is to try and represent people, it is to try and acknowledge that there were people from broad cultural backgrounds, different religious backgrounds. So. We've tried to include everybody. This has been met um, with some resistance in some areas. However, we feel that we have been open about it and once we've explained to people that it isn't about glorifying executions, it's not about glorifying those that were executed, that this is a worthwhile historical project that we've undertaken. Today I'd like to call upon Auntie Velda Coolwell to make the Welcome to Country Address. Thank you, Auntie Velda. I greet you in the language of my great-grandmother, a Gurang Gurang woman from central Queensland. But today, reparation is high on the list. Special people are making amends for the injustices of the past taking responsibility and I would like to commend and thank the Bogger Road Historical Society and Brisbane City Council for their initiative and input for recognising these forgotten brothers and sister. Finally giving closure to a sad and shameful era of Australian history. This is just a minute portion of the story. Yengem Nai Beralagim Yenandi. In my language, gone but not forgotten. Thank you. This project has taken some considerable time to be realised and it has been a project that has been rewarding for the historical society to be involved in. History, because it is a topic that is very subjective by nature, can often prove to be the catalyst for some healthy debate. There have been some concerns raised by our historical society and other members of our community over the appropriateness sorry, of this project and its intended significance. I would now ask you all to take part in a minute's silence as a mark of respect to the victims of these executed prisoners while also paying your respects to all victims of crime wherever they may be throughout the world. Thank you. While we have not directly acknowledged the victims of the executed on the plaque that will be unveiled by Helen Abrahams today, the plaque only forms a small part of the overall executions project undertaken by the Bogaro Jail Historical Society. In line with paying our respects to the victims of those executed, we have acknowledged the victims in our publication on this project, A Pit of Shame. We will also be acknowledging the victims in our gallows display which will open at Bogger Road Jail in the near future. The entire executions project is intended to educate the public about the executions that once took, once took place at the jail site. Queensland became the first part of the British Empire to abolish the death penalty. Our history group hopes that by drawing attention to the issue of capital punishment through projects such as this plaque, 
that we will encourage people to question their own stance on the subject. Involvement from a variety of people that make up the Brisbane and Queensland community is the only way we can ensure that our rich Indigenous, migrant and colonial stories are adequately preserved for the learning and enjoyment of future generations. I would now like to ask Councillor Helen Abrahams to address our gathering today and, and I would also ask Helen to unveil the plaque. Thank you. An eye for an eye is probably the most quoted particle of the, one of the most quoted particles of the Bible. A phrase that I do not agree with. And therefore I am delighted to be able to hear to launch um, this recommend, this token and acknowledgement of the 42 people who were hung in the um, jail just nearby. All but one had no marking and no name. I'm not aware of all of their histories. I know many of them will be poor, illiterate, indigenous, and have a variety of backgrounds. Not all, however. But I do think it's an important area that we acknowledge at this time. Some may go and pick up through the Bogoro jail but others will just look into themselves, and that to me is equally as important. This plaque would not have occurred unless Councillor David Hinchcliffe had made the funds available from the Brisbane City Council um, for this memorial to take place. So thank you for that, and I now I'll believe... It's quite <laughs> Okay. Can I check it in? There we are. I am not going to make a speech, you'll be um, very pleased to hear Michael. I just want to acknowledge the wonderful work of the Historical Society, of which I'm very proud, um, that has given us the chance to take the time, as Michael so rightly said, to just stop and think, confront our own views, confront our history, which has so much violence, and to acknowledge the people who are resting beside us as we sit here. So I hope that this morning we can learn, we can take the time to think, and that in the future people who are wandering through this beautiful place will stop, read the plaque and cause them to think and to share a moment of sorrow for everything that went before. So thank you very much and value our history. It's how we learn to have a better future. Thank you all for attending. I would like to now uh, thank the guys and girls in our society. Thank you for those of you that have attended today. Thank you for the guys in the workshop that got down here early this morning and put the chairs down. They are actually official prisoner chairs. They're what the prisoners used to sit on at Boggaroe Jail. So you are sharing in a moment's history as you sit on those chairs. Um, I'd like to thank you very much, guys. You continue to do a wonderful job. Thank you very much for attending and we really appreciate your support. Thank you, everyone. The main argument put forward by us has been that many of the victims of this crime do not have tombstones or the memorials. They remain in unmarked graves, forgotten, and now because of this memorial, to those who killed them, uncommemorated. And to me, and to my staff, and to the people who endorsed me today to represent them, they believe that, uh, that their rights to have their loved ones commemorated was of a greater priority to this. That's all I wish to say. I thank you for your time. My name's Neville Lyons, and my wife Dorothy, and I'm here today because in 1903, my great-grandfather David Johnson 
an acting police sergeant in Mackay was murdered by Sao Tu Lu, and he is one of the 42 that are buried here after they've been executed at Bogoro Jail. Uh, capital punishment was done away with in 1913, and it's a thing I'm very much in favour of. Uh, 1913 was the last execution. Oh, yeah, 1922 was, was formally uh, dispensed with. And I think this part, important part of Queensland history, and it's a sign of social progress in our society to make us a more humane society than, than we used to be. But the, the function of the day was wonderful. Uh, they had a very balanced uh, um, meeting and that it gave credit not only to the 42 people who were murdered by the state, which is the real way of describing it, but gave concern to the victims here, victims of crime, and the victims of crime everywhere. Well, I thought today was a, a good idea. It's um, a lot of our history is hidden away. We never knew about these people, and like for South Sea Islanders in here, is very important to me. They were taken away from their country um, by force. I can't sort of um, berate the you know these sort of things that happened, but they happened, and we need people need to know. A lot of people, white people, don't know about what's happened. Yep. So the story has to be told. I think today went exceptionally well. We had a number of the community comment on how well they thought the day went. Uh, we had, we've had religious leaders comment on the appropriateness of today. Uh, the politicians that attended were more than happy with the way things went. So the general feedback's been, been really good and despite the controversy and the, the difficulties that we went through in getting this plaque to where it is now finally completed and in the ground, it's been a totally worthwhile project and um, we couldn't be happier or prouder of the effort that we've put in and uh, the results of all that effort are here for people to see.